India is an adventurous paradise. You head out for a holiday, which quickly turns into a survival situation. A dream turns into a nightmare. I'm thirsty, I'm tired, I'm hungry and I'm lost. Shelter, water and food become a priority. A fire to keep you warm. But how? I'm Chandan Lahiri from OTS Survival School. I'll give you some tips and show you some tricks to use in a self-reliant situation. Do not think problems can only happen to other people. It can happen to you. Do you know what your core body temperature is? 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. When we get fever, that rises. In cold weather, it might drop by about a degree or two. If it drops or rises, eight or 10 degrees below or above 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, you could be looking at serious trouble. So you need to control your body's core temperature. There are two things in this spectrum which can kill you. At one end is dehydration and heat stroke. On the other end is hypothermia. So what you need to do is know what are the various ways your body can lose heat or gain heat? There are six of them. And the six are conduction, convection, radiation, respiration, perspiration, and immersion. These are the six ways your body can lose heat. And if you're aware of this and your body is rising in temperature, so your core body temperature is rising, you need to get the core body temperature down so use one of these six methods to bring it down. What is conduction? Conduction is if I'm sitting on snow or if I'm sitting on a hot rock, the heat from the hotter surface will radiate into, will conduct into the cooler surface. That's conduction. Convection is what's happening now. The wind is blowing and because of the wind, the skin, is feeling the heat and this wind in a desert <coughs> will raise your body temperature and if it's windy and cold it'll lower your core body temperature radiation is essentially heat escaping into space so when you're making shelter constructing shelter ensure that you're not sleeping out in the open have a covering Trap all that heat which is radiating out of your body. Respiration. You may not believe it, but every time we breathe, we are breathing out warm air. You might have noticed it in, in winters. When we breathe, we cup our hands and breathe into our hands. So what you can do is take a scarf, breathe into the scarf and breathe in through that scarf. So as you're breathing out, the scarf gets a little warmer and you're breathing in warmer air not cold air. Perspiration. Sweat is a way of our body cooling ourselves. When you get into heat stroke, you might actually stop sweating. So what you need to do is remember, you need to induce sweat in case of dehydration in order to maintain your core body temperature. Last is immersion. It could be through rain, it could be through snow, or it could be through falling into cold water maybe. When you fall into cold water, or any kind of water for that matter, it sucks out the heat from the body almost 20, 25, 30 times faster than the wind does. So if you're in a hypothermic situation, you need to get warm quickly. Take off all your wet clothes, and try and get warm as quickly as possible because all the heat from your body is getting sucked out because of the wetness. But if you're into heat stroke and you find a pool of water, jump into it because your body will cool so much faster. So those are the six ways with which you can control your body's core temperature. It can happen to you. Learn to adapt, improvise, innovate, and overcome. To learn more tips and tricks, visit this site. I'm Chandan Lahiri, and I hope to see you soon at the OTS Survival School. Leave nothing but footprints. Bring back nothing but memories.